Hello and welcome once again to DPN TV here at the DPN Rover Car Collection and this is a video on how to pull a vacuum on the air conditioning system after changing a part or perhaps the system has not been gassed for a long period and then once the vacuum is pulled um, how we fill it with gas and get the system running. Uh, this is a follow on video but a separate one to when we change the compressor. We start under the engine letting you see all how we do it. So after fitting the compressor and of course changing the drives you can see down there it's now time for us to evacuate the system pull a vacuum so we've got our um, gauges up there and all three pipes connected and uh, basically you put the um, red to the high pressure side and then the blue goes down here on the low pressure side and the yellow hose the you would often feel with gas this time because we're vacuuming the system is connected to our vacuum pump and uh, you should be able to hear that running in the background and we're going to be pulling the vacuum for a couple of hours as the system has been open just to make sure then we let it sit to make sure it holds the vacuum and then we'll be ready for the gas um, one little um, problem we did have when we initially started pulling the vacuum was um, it wouldn't pull one basically and after looking round and uh, having a list of actually a little piece of um, um, water pipe we found we could hear air rushing in um, on the two connections that you can see there on the um, compressor and we found it appeared to be coming from this side uh, so we've had to remove the alternator again uh, to get in there and what we actually found is is we removed this little bolt here which holds this pipe onto the main uh, fitting that goes into the compressor um, and then we found that this then could tighten more so we think that it had sat crookedly and appeared it was tight when it wasn't so that's uh, certainly one thing we've learned is to possibly leave this out tighten this down and then bring this one in so that it actually does see and that does appear to have cured it and as you can see by the gauges we are now um, pulling a vacuum so now it's just a case of waiting for the vacuum pump to pull a vacuum for a period of time and um, then hoping that it holds and um, the next video hopefully should be us then uh, letting you see the gas going into the system. And these are the standard sort of valves that you um, pull the collar up, push down and let the collar down and uh, it releases on. And of course, one of the other things I forgot to mention, to make sure you don't lose any vacuum, you should switch the vacuum pump on and let it pull a vacuum up to your manifold these should be off at that point then turn these to on so the vacuum pulls down the two lines if it's then still holding a vacuum there's no leaking on your manifold and then at that point you turn these down which will push the valve down opening up the system and you have both open so you're evacuating the whole system and also you should do that um, procedure almost in reverse but you'll leave them open but you'll turn these two off then the pump off and check that it then holds your um, vacuum because if you um, turn the pump off first the pump could allow air back in so you need to shut them off then turn the pump off to check it holds your vacuum obviously if you then were to turn these off you would only be checking the vacuum within your hose, it's not the whole system, so you need to leave um, them open at that point, which is what we'll be doing in a couple of hours' time. So after pulling a vacuum for around about half hour, then turning the valve off, turning the vacuum pump off and waiting for around about an hour to check it would hold a vacuum we then turn the vacuum pump on and open the valve 
um, for round about another hour to make sure we've definitely removed as much moisture from the system as we could. At that point it's time to then turn off the pump and of course close the valve and start putting the gas in but before we put the gas in what we do is put an ultraviolet yellowy dye into the yellow hose using a um, little syringe it comes in that syringe i think we bought a packet of um, probably about 20 of of these it's a cheap way of buying it on ebay and will last us certainly a long time and basically although the syringe comes with a little device that you put on the low pressure side and pump in um, it's not always an easy thing to do so we inject into the yellow tube put the gas bottle on and let the the gas um, and the course of suction of the system pull it through and that's what you're about to see now is us putting the yellow dye in before we connect the gas bottle and of course then what that allows us to do is once the air conditioning's run for a time is go around with uh, an ultraviolet light and just check there's no minor leaks or any other seals leaking and it also let us know if there is a leak that couldn't be detected any other way. Right, so we've finished vacuating the system and pulled the vacuum and now we're going to put the gas in. If I just give you a distant shot back of the engine, that allows you to see where the high and low ports are. That's the blue and the red on the 45 engine. And we've got our bottle of gas connected there. It'll be a case of releasing the gas in. Um, initially we'll have to wait for the compressor to cut in when there's enough pressure keep putting the gas in until we get the right pressure readings on our manifold gasket. So as you've just seen we've got all the um, gas bottle connected up to the manifold rig and the high and low pressure side connected. The next thing to do is to come into the car and set the right air conditioning heater settings. Uh, what we normally do is have the um, air position set to purely face because then it's blowing the cold air right onto you as you're sitting in the car so you can definitely feel that the air conditioning is starting to work of course you need this twisted to cold um, fan free i think is more than enough uh, of course you need the ac button pushed and you'll get a little orange or blue light glowing there and you can also push the recirculate button, that makes sure that the air is recirculating in the cabin so it will get colder quick and you'll probably feel it's getting cold and you'll probably even from the outside smell kind of that sort of fridge smell, that, ch kill, that chilled cool air feeling. Even on a cold day like today you can still feel the difference just by holding your hand on the vent, the difference between the cold air being sucked in and the air conditioned air that's got a real chill so you should know that um, it's starting to work and of course the confirmancy will be the readings on your um, pressure gauge and uh, also the air conditioning pipes. Uh, normally one will be getting warm whilst one is um, slightly chilled or possibly very cold. That again depends on the weather and how much heat it's actually removing from the cabin of the car. Now we're going to open it to let the gas in. And as you can see there, the compressor is cutting in as the gas goes in. Now it can surge on and off like that until it's satisfied. It's definitely got the right amount of gas. As you've just seen, we put in the dye to see if there's any leaks in the syringe through the yellow hose. And you should have also seen the compressor cut in once we've had enough gas to allow the compressor to cut in safely. 
So the gas is going in and the pressures are coming near to what we want them. So the last thing we do once all the gas is in is that we put in a sealant, uh, as you can see there, and that will just work round with the gas and make sure there were any silly little leaks or any little bits developed uh, in the early few weeks that should seal it and as you can see the pressures are where we want uh, and that's really the last stage of us putting the uh, gas in is to put this sealant in just to make sure that would be the case then is to do things in reverse which is to turn the blue dial off to isolate the empty can that we're putting in at the moment then you'll need to turn the blue and red off and remove the caps and the gassing process will be finished Right, so that's the gassing and also the sealant added and as you can see it's all running nicely and uh, also the compressor is running. So things that um, we've learned during the gassing process, well first of all when we pulled the vacuum we found that the connections on the compressor were still loose and that just needed tightening. Uh, and when we started with the gas, luckily we didn't waste any gas, but um, this dryer down there started to um, leak. So straight away we shut it off and we found that the seal had been slightly crimped or damaged. So we had to put a new set of seals on and uh, we put a second seal around the top as well just to make sure. Now when we added the additive, we found that it had actually slightly over pressurised the system which surprised us because we didn't think that that would have been enough gas with the additive but it um, did. Now the symptoms we got was the compressor started to cut in and out rapidly and uh, also the fan went on to a fast speed so what we had to do was redrain some of the gas out just to get it back down to um, a suitable pressure and as soon as we'd done that not only did the compressor stop cutting in and out which we expected but the fan immediately went back to its slow speed so even if you're not sure on your pressures if that fan goes into fast speed then it's obviously another indication that you have started to over gas but now it's all working right this pipe is feeling nice and cold and uh, this pipe is feeling um, warm, probably not as much as in the uh, summer, but it is doing that. So hopefully all we can do now is use it and uh, hope that it's working all right. So hopefully that's been useful to you and gives you an insight into how we do it. As always, the way we show you is what we've learned as we've gone along and from our experience in the past. Uh, we always recommend, of course, you watch a selection of videos if you want to take on this job and also have the uh, Haynes manual and um, Rover this to refer to for specific gas pressures and any um, talk settings but as I say I often find uh, that the visual sort of video showing you how it does along with all the um, manual information always helps and hopefully that's what this video has, has done and let you see how you would pull a vacuum and then gas a Rover 45 to get the air conditioning system up and running. As always thank you very much for watching don't forget you can find us on Instagram and Twitter.